Hello and welcome, it's Justin from DevShack Coding Academy. By the end of this video, you'll have all the foundational and practical knowledge that you need to build a HTTP REST style API using the Express.js framework. I'll guide you through the most important aspects that you need to know in order to build APIs with Express in a confident and efficient way. And once you have completed this tutorial, we have a deeper understanding of how HTTP servers work in general, as well as how to build them using the Express.js framework. You can find the links to the code that we've gone through in this lesson in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to stay notified for future videos that I release. Two important notes before we actually begin. The first one is this lesson is going to assume that you're uh, comfortable and familiar with writing JavaScript, as well as writing JavaScript in a Node.js environment. And secondly, in this tutorial, we'll be focusing on how to use Express to build a REST style HTTP server. We won't necessarily be covering how to build a, a full on web app using Express in the, the server side rendering style. So. That's just a heads up from my side to manage expectations. To get to the point where we can actually begin writing our HTTP server, I wanted to cover some basic foundational knowledge so we can just have some important context before we get into the main content of this lesson. The first thing that I wanted to cover was the idea of the server client model. And this is just a high level concept. It's a kind of a paradigm that is used in a web architecture. When you type in a URL into your web browser, something like youtube.com, the web browser is going to go ahead and do the work to find a computer that's on the internet that is connected to that domain. And once that connection is made, the server will receive that request. And then once that request is processed, it will send back some information back to the client who initiated that request. Once that request and response has been completed, the web browser is going to receive the information that's sent back to the server and then it's going to display that information to the end user is, who is the person who's like visiting the website and a either a web page or some type of UI or user interface is going to kind of be rendered into something that's user friendly. So that's all I wanted to cover with this model and it leads us to the second point that I wanted to cover and that is the HTTP protocol. The HTTP protocol is designed to fetch resources from servers on the internet. So servers can return HTML, CSS, JavaScript, videos and pictures as well as other types of resources. And HTTP is one of the most common ways that we exchange information on the internet. HTTP makes use of this client server model that we've spoken about in the previous point. And that is that the requests are sent from the client to the server, and then the server will then process that response and send it back to the client. And this exchange happens one message at a time. Each request is one HTTP message and it is received by the server and then a single response is sent back. So there is no constant stream or flow of data like there is with WebSockets. It's just like one message sent, one message is received back in response. And HTTP is what we call a stateless protocol. All that means is that each message that is received by the server, the server has no context about any previous messages that were sent from the client. So each each kind of request response lifecycle that is going on is it only knows the current context of the current request that is incoming. And the last concept that I wanted to cover was the whole idea of this request response lifecycle. We know what the client server paradigm is. We know what HTTP is now. The message that is sent by the client is what we call the request and the message that is sent from the server back to the client is what we call a response. An HTTP request will contain additional information related to uh, metadata, things like the method, which is often a verb like get, post or put. It'll have the URL, the path, the headers and the body. And all this information will be packaged together and sent over to the server using the HTTP protocol. And the response in a similar vein will also have a similar structure. It will have headers and a body and it will contain all the information that is needed to be sent back to the client. And then the client will then render some, some type of information back into the web browser. And, and the body of responses can contain things like HTML and also structured data like JSON. So the time taken from the initial request that is sent to the server and the response that is sent back, this is something that we can just refer to as that like the whole cycle of this is the request response life cycle. And so this is a, an important concept and it'll be a common theme throughout this whole tutorial um, and a key to understanding some of the fundamentals of Express. I think the, the key concept here is that a request is initiated from the client and is going to then flow through a whole lot of intermediary computers on the internet and reach a destination. Once it's in the destination, it's going to be passed by the server and the server will then send back a response and it'll flow back through the same kind of channel. 
back to the browser. And so with all of the all of the foundational knowledge that we've just put together, we can now ask the question, what exactly is Express? Express is a library or framework that is written in JavaScript and it's run in a node environment and it allows us to create our very own HTTP server. And this HTTP server will be able to listen for and handle incoming requests that are initiated by the client. Once we receive that request, we'll be able to handle it in any manner that we want to and then we'll be able to send a response back to the client who initiated the request. And so we can use Express to build web applications as well as RESTful APIs like we're going to do in this tutorial. Express makes working with HTTP servers in Node very, very simple, and it also ends up saving us a lot of time. And in the next part of this tutorial, we'll focus on writing our own Express server from scratch. And so let's get started with that right away. Now we can turn our attention to setting up our server. First thing that you can do is just set up your development environment, open up an IDE of your choice. I'm using Visual Studio Code as well as a terminal if you need to. Just create a directory that we can use. I'm gonna call this Express Express.js API and at the moment there is nothing in this directory and the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and I'm going to create a entry point into our node.js application so I'll use the touch command I'll say touch index.js and that's going to create an index.js file for us and the next step is to initialize this as a node application so we'll do an npm init-y and this will just create our package.json file for us and we can just go ahead in the package.json file. You can alter any one of these keys and values as you wish. For now, all I wanna do is add a new key here and I'm going to add the type here and assign it the value of module because I wanna make use of the new ES6 style uh, import export syntax. And the next thing that I'm going to do is just remove that default script that is in there. And I'm going to create a start script and that's just going to run our index.js file. And in our index.js file, I'll just put a simple console log. This is something I like to do just when starting and connecting files, just make sure that everything is working correctly. So we'll just put a simple console log and then we can run npm run start in our terminal. And if I hit enter there, you'll see that we get our testing, our index.js console log is here. And so that we know now, when we run that command, the entry point of our application, which is defined over here, will now be executed. So we've got our node project set up. The next task will be for us to install some NPM packages. And so I want to install uh, Express, obviously. That's going to be the package that we're going to be using throughout this tutorial. So we'll do an NPM install Express, and it's just one word Express. I'm going to hit enter there and it's gonna do its thing. Once it's installed, you can just verify that in your package.json, you'll see it in your dependencies. The, the last package that I wanna install is a package called Nodemon, and that's just gonna help us with hot reloading while we're working in our development environment. So I'll just say npm install Nodemon. And once we have that installed, I'm just going to go ahead and change our start script here. We're gonna say Nodemon index.js. And if you hit save there and uh, we rerun our npm start script, you'll see that we have got a little bit of a different output in our terminal here. You can see our console log, but now anytime we make changes to our code base here and hit save, you'll see that it auto reruns the, the node index.js for us. So that's just gonna be nice and useful. All right, so we've got our node project set up. We've installed our dependencies. Let's just go ahead and delete this console log. And we've got an empty index.js file that we're gonna start with here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to set up a basic HTTP server that will be listening on a specific port on our computer and it'll be ready waiting to receive HTTP requests. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna type out the, the very basic code here. And once we've typed that out, then I'll explain exactly what's going on. So if you just follow along, we can import Express here, and then that'll be from the Express library that we've just installed. So we'll say import Express from Express. And then to make use of Express, we can declare a constant and we're gonna name this app. We'll reference Express here. And then all we need to do is open our parenthesis. And this is just invoking the instance of Express and kind of initializing an Express instance for us, which I'll explain shortly. But moving on, the very first piece of code here that we wanna do is we wanna we want to start a HTTP server. I'm just going to open a try catch block. We'll just set up a error which we can throw we can throw a new error 
if an error does come up. And then in the body of the try block here, we can just reference this app instance that we've created here. And this is an instance of Express with a whole lot of methods and properties available to us. And one of the methods that are available to us is this listen function. And it's basically going to create a node HTTP server for us. So we'll just say app.listen, and then it takes in two arguments. The first one will, you can define a port number that you want your HTTP server to listen on. And you can pass this in as a number. I've passed it in as 3000. And then it takes in a optional callback. Basically, this can be used to run any piece of code. For now, we can just say, we'll just say API listening on port 3000. All right, very simple stuff. Just a note, if you don't pass in a specific port number in here, what Express is going to do is going to find an available random port in your computer and just set it up on that. So in most cases, you'll see that you always specify a specific port. And in most development environments, it's, it's either 3000 or, or 9000 or something. Those are the common ones that you'll see. Around. Once we hit save there, you'll see in our console log of our terminal, you'll see we get that um, API is listening on port 3000. And with that, we have got our basic HTTP server. It's as simple as that. It really is as simple as that. We can go ahead to an application like Postman and we can just initialize a new request. And so we'll just make a get request to the local host on port 3000. And I'm going to go ahead and send that request. And you'll see if we preview this, we just get some, uh, we're just getting a 404 not found and we're just getting some HTML back from the server. So the point here is that we've initialized the request with this get request here and we've made that request, the server received it and it's responded with a 404 not found. And this is an important point when you have no uh, root request handlers that you've set up in your express project, you're going to always hit this default 404 not found. And this HTML that you're seeing here is just a, a default error or a 404 not found response that that express uses as kind of a catch all in case there are no request handles that are matched to the incoming request. A quick reminder here on line number one here, the first thing we've done is we've um, imported a reference of the Express library from uh, our node modules that we installed. The very next step in order to work with Express is to instantiate this Express library. The way we do that is just referencing Express and invoke like an empty function there. And that basically triggers the top level function that gets exported by the Express library. And it initializes Express in a way that it is then the output of this function will then be assigned to this app object that now we've created. And this is an instance that we can now use in our application. And that's exactly what we do in this block of code here. We do the work to set up our HTTP server. We wrap it in a try catch block and we reference this app object that we've just created. On that object, we have this dot listen function that's available to us. It takes in a port, which we've defined as 3000, and then this optional callback here, which then just runs the line of console log. So that's the very basics of what we've just set up at the moment our API is not doing anything intelligent but we do have the ability to receive the re HTTP requests that are initiated from a client for those of you that want to dig a little bit deep into this if we take a look at line number three here this was something that I was always a bit curious about when I was first learning about Express and all of this stuff is what exactly does the, the Express instance mean and how exactly does this work this led me to digging around into the actual code of Express so if you go to the node modules and you go and find the express folder, you'll see there's a whole lot of files in here. And this express folder has its own index.js file, which is the entry point to the express library. And you can see all it does is it exports this file here, which is express. And so we can go ahead and find that it will be in the lib folder and this express.js file. So basically the entry point of express is just exporting this file. So this is basically like the file that is initializing the express library. So if we take a look at this file you'll see there's a whole lot of imports at the top of this file but if we scroll down and take a look at line 28 this is what I wanted to show you is basically Express is using this fancy syntax where in this one line it's e exporting this whole module in the same time it's also using this syntax where it creates this kind of namespace or a module that is going to be exported and in one line it also assigns the value of this function here called create application and that is actually is this function right here what this means is that when we import the express library this create application function will be invoked automatically right so as soon as you use any imports a syntax to bring in your express and you invoke it this 
create application function will be automatically run. And if we take a look at this function, in the scope of the this function's body, it creates its own instance of app. And it's just using some really fancy syntax here to kind of initialize the Express library. And it's creating things like the request, the response, the next middleware. And it, it's initializing this app object with all the, the stuff that we need and that Express makes available to us. And then it returns this app object. If we go all the way back to our own index.js, this Express invocation that we have here creates an instance of that app object, and then we assign it here. And then we've basically got a reference to the whole Express library on this app object, and then we can call these different functions. So this create application function here is what we call a top level function. And that's a, a very neat way of doing these kinds of things. But the interesting part is that this exports module here that we have throughout the, the rest of this code file, there's a whole lot of other properties that are being assigned here, as well as uh, different functions. And so anything that is available on this exports module, like .json, .query, those are all things then that we can call on our app object. And we can then just do interesting things like initialize middleware, which we'll cover in a moment. Just take note that there's a whole lot of different methods and properties that we can access now on this app object. And Another interesting thing to take note of here is just understanding how this dot listen works a bit deeper. If we go to this application.js file and you scroll all the way down, you'll see that there's this app.listen property here, which is assigned the value of the function listen. And this is the function that we invoke to create our HTTP server. And so all that's happening here is that a variable called server is being it has been created here and is referencing this is the straight up node uh, HTTP library, which references its own calls its own function called create server. And the interesting thing is it pass the value that it passes into this create server function is the value of this, which is a reference to this whole application object. Uh, that has all these other uh, methods and properties on it. So in this way, it's just like kind of passing the whole express configuration into a node HTTP server, and then it returns a node HTTP server, and it uses some very fancy syntax here to apply the, the value of this, uh, to pass through the server, as well as the arguments that are coming through this listen function. And so in this way, anything that we pass through here, which is the port and this callback, gets passed through into the node application. And when this app.listen is invoked, it, it will then, the, the return of this function actually returns a node HTTP server. So if we really wanted to do, to do that, we could like create a constant here. We would have a reference to the actual node server. And if you take a look at the node docs for the create server function, uh, anything that's available on a, a normal HTTP server, you'll be able to access on, on this variable if you receive the output of this app.listen function. So that allows you just to kind of extend in anything that's available to us on, on the node library. So that's just diving into this a little bit deeper. If that doesn't really make sense. Don't really worry about it. It's just understanding these things and diving into it, like getting into the habit of doing this is, is quite a, a cool exercise. That concludes our first part of this lesson, and that's just setting up this HTTP server. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is covering the concept of middleware in Express.js. And so now that we've created that HTTP server and we've got a way for receiving requests from a client, remember that the whole goal with this HTTP protocol is to create one whole request response lifecycle. Um, with a, a clear beginning and an end. And the request is the beginning and the response will be the end of this life cycle. In between the, the start and the end or the request and the response, there's a whole lot of stuff that we can do in the middleware. And hence, this is what we call, and this is why it is called middleware. In between the request and response, we can do a whole lot of things like uh, inspect the request to check if it's valid, um, if it's in a, a structure that we want it to be in, uh, if it's an authenticated, if it requires authentication, we can check if it's validly or if it's authenticated in a valid way. Um, we can take the data from the request, search, uh, our, uh, make queries to a database using specific IDs. We can even route a specific request that comes in and pass it on to additional middleware. So the code that we write to handle these incoming requests is what we call middleware. And the way I like to think of it is like this. We have this function now that we've set up that is waiting to receive requests on port 3000. And we can think of that as the entrance or the gateway to our whole service. So the question is, how do we grab a hold of this re request? And we can take the express library that we've set up and we can use a whole lot of functions and methods and properties from this express library to inspect the request that flows in. So, the, so once the request has come in through our gate, 
or our entrance to our server, we can then do a whole lot of things. And the important thing to understand here is Express is designed in a way that it allows the request to flow through a whole chain of functions and, and pieces of code that we write, which we can call the middleware chain. And it can then flow from one to another to another or to it can be like rooted to different middleware that we create. The, the last piece of middleware then will kind of in, um, send back a kind of a response or a method that invokes a response. And that, that will then end the whole HTTP response or request response cycle. And so understanding this concept is a key to understanding how Express works. And if you do understand it, things will make a lot of sense down the line. If you don't understand it 100% at this stage, it'll make, a lot, it'll make a bit more sense as we work through some of the code examples. But just kind of like keep this picture in mind and maybe come back to, to this specific diagram later on if you're struggling to understand the concept of middleware. It, basically in Express, the way the Express library that, uh, has been created, it kind of uses five types or we can say general categories of, of middleware. It uses application level middleware, which will be available to us on that app, app object that we've spoken about. It uses, uh, we can make use of router level middleware as well as errors, which is like own type of, of middleware, as well as built-in middleware, uh, just for like some convenience functions like handling JSON requests and stuff like that as well as making use of third-party packages that can be middleware pieces themselves. So we'll be going through all, uh, the different types of middleware in a bit more detail. Let's just park that for now. We've gone through the concept of what middleware is, but let's now go back to our code and start writing some code to kind of tie this all together. So we're going to begin writing a few pieces of middleware here just to explain the concept. If we take a look at Postman, which we were using earlier, the request that we've initialized, it kind of follows this, this protocol. Uh, so it's got the, the HTTP protocol as like the prefix here. And then we've got the, the host or the domain, which in our case is localhost. And then it's got a colon and specifying the port, which what we've defined as 3000 in our listen. But the important thing that I wanted to just show you here is that when we've initialized this request, we've just had a, a forward slash. And that's basically anything that comes after the port or on this forward slash is what we'll call the, the URL path. Down the line, when we go through routes and route matching, this will make a bit more sense. But just for now, and I want you to know that anything that is sent to the forward slash path will be access to like the high level part of our application. So you, we've tested this. If we send this request, we're getting a 404 not found. So that HTML that is sent back is just the, the default uh, express error handling. But let's go ahead and try and catch our first request um, using application level middleware. So we can reference this app object and we can reference this method called use. And this method is available to us on the express object. And it basically allows us to map a specific piece of middleware, which is just a function that we write to a specific path that is coming in from the client request. So as I was explaining just now, the kind of root level or the first layer of the path is this forward slash we can just reference the forward slash to be like any request that comes through the gate of our, our server we want to do something with that and what we want to do with that is run a piece of code that will be assigned to this callback that we we pass in here as the second argument to the dot use so the dot use takes in a path and then a, a function which will be act as the the function which is your middleware that you want to run so the interesting thing with these callbacks that we can set up here and from now on we can just we can refer to them as request handlers these are just simple javascript functions that uh, will be run whenever an, a request is received on the base path but the magic of the express library is that allows us to receive a few pieces of information here it, it will be able to give us the request the response as well as this next faction which i'll explain in a moment and so the first thing let's just do a simple console log and we'll say first middleware hit and then i'm going to go ahead and save our work if we head on over to postman and we initialize a request to the base path here and i hit send you'll see that the request is hanging and that's because we haven't sent back a response to the client but you'll see that our console log with first middleware has indeed been hit. I'll just cancel that request. So this is our, our first piece of middleware. There's a few things that we can do. For now, let's just do another console log and let's just log out the request URL and we'll say rec.url. 
there's a whole lot of properties and even methods that are available to us on the request object. We will inspect that in a, a moment's time. Let's just do some simple stuff here. So if we go back to that middleware chain diagram that we're looking at, we've got to grab a hold of the request now. And so we can do whatever we want with it. Uh, at the moment, all we're doing is just taking the, the URL part that's coming off the request and we're printing it out. So I'm going to make use of this next function which is a special function that is available to us in Express. All it does is it's going to pass on the flow of our incoming request onto the next piece of middleware in the chain. And so at this point in time, we haven't got any additional middleware that we've created. So what's going to happen is it's just going to pass it on to the next piece of middleware that Express has. And the, the one that Express has is that 404 not found that we saw previously. So we should see that 404 not found error. So let's test that out. And in Postman, we can hit a get request to the, the localhost 3000 here. And you'll see we do indeed get back that 404 not found. Uh, you'll see also that we get this middleware hit. We get that rectored URL, which is just saying uh, the base path. So it's just the forward slash. But the important thing here is like you can see the request is not hanging anymore. There was a definite request. It was handled and then a response was sent back. And the reason why a response was sent back is because we called this next function here. What I wanted to show you here is if we put something else in our request path here, like for user, for example, you'll see that we, we do get this 404 not found. We see that the first piece of middleware was hit. We, the request.url and user has been hit here. And so basically this piece of middleware that we've written here, this block of code is going to be executed every single part or like every single request that comes into our API because this is on the base path. So just to demonstrate this, let's create a second piece of middleware that we can use. And then, so we'll just set this up in a similar way. We'll just say app.use. And then again, on the, the base path, we'll set up a callback and we'll grab a hold of the request, the response and this next function. And I'll just put a simple console log here. We'll say second middleware hit and then we'll just call the next function there. And let's test this in our postman. You'll see that we get the first middleware is hit. It prints out the request at URL. We also get the second middleware is hit. And no matter what path that we use, you'll see that both those pieces of middleware are being hit. And we could continue creating and chain and this is what I refer to as like that's what I what I call the the why I call this the middleware chain is we can just keep writing a whole lot of functions here the point that I'm trying to make is that each one of these app.use methods that we invoke registers a a piece of middleware on this app object that every request that comes through then will then It'll evaluate what the path is. And if it matches this path, it'll, it'll run this, this middleware. And so in our case, the first one that's registered is this callback here. So this code will be run. It calls the next function, which moves on to the next one in the chain, which is the second one that we've written. And then it hits the second middleware um, console log here, and then it invokes the next function. And in this way, you'll see as we go along, um, we can handle requests in any way that we want. There's so much obviously that we can do, but the magic of Express is that it allows us to, to write chunks of code to be able to pass these incoming requests. All right, so at this stage, we've just covered the .use function and it's basically used to map uh, middleware to certain paths. Let's, let's move on to a, another method that we can take a look at here. Any one of the HTTP verbs that are available to us, like the, the four common ones are, are post, put, uh, get, and delete. They'll be available to us as as actual functions. So we could say app.get or app.post. And basically it's like one level more specific than this app.use. It's going to then only map any incoming get request. So any request that has the, the method of get to specific routes. Now we can set up a more detailed route. So we'll say uh, anything on the forward slash user path, then we can set up a callback function. And let's just do a rec and res here. So that's the request and response. And in this case, I'm going to leave out the next uh, function because I don't want to invoke it. I actually want to end the, the HTTP re request response cycle here. So I'm not going to um, handle, this is going to be like, this is where the, the bus stops, right? Like this is the last piece of middleware in, in the chain for, for this kind of occurrence. And so I'll just do a console log here, middleware, or we'll say user request handler. 
And so I'm going to save our work here. We head on over to Postman and just make sure you use this dot user forward slash here. And if you hit send, you'll see that we get first middleware is hit, second middleware is hit, and we get this user request handler. And the request is hanging because we haven't ended the, the request and the response. So let's just go ahead and do that now. We can just say res dot send and we'll send back a, a 200 status code. If we rerun this, you'll see that we get a 200 we get back uh, okay. And you can see that there's a message that comes up here. It says express as deprecated res.send status. And so we must use a different method instead. So this is an old habit of mine, but instead of saying res.send, you can say res.send st status. I'm gonna save my work. We'll resend the request. And you'll see we get the user request handler was sent and we get that 200. So the whole request response cycle has been. So in this case, we were initially initiating a get request, but let's say that we change that to a post. You'll see that we get the, the first middleware was hit, the second one was hit, but we actually didn't. And then we get a four, four not found because we don't actually hit this piece of middleware because it's a post and not a get. So um, on the application level middleware, the method dot use kind of is for everything it's like mounting any middleware on a specific path but when we use this app dot get post delete put it's only going to uh, like match it on specific http verbs that are coming all right so before we move on to routing and uh, root handling and that kind of thing I, I wanted to just take the time now to set up some some more sophisticated debugging for us at this point in time we've been using these console logs what i wanted to do was just take this one step further and so in node, we can just set up a, a debug script here. And this is just going to allow us to start our node server or our node application in like a debug type mode. So we can say node mon, and then we'll just add this flag in here. And we're going to say inspect. And then we'll just reference the index.js file. I'm going to save my work there. Now that we have this debug script set up, all we needed to do was just insert this dash dash inspect flag. And this will allow us to use the Chrome Dev tools to, to insert debuggers in our node application. And then we can just step through the code. And we can take a look at some of the objects uh, that are coming through on the request and in the response and all of those good things. So, so all we need to do is instead of running npm run start, we can say npm run debug. And we can hit enter there. And you'll see in addition to the usual logs, we get the debugger is listening on a specific host on the local host. So if you go to this URL here, Chrome colon forward slash forward slash inspect, you hit enter, you'll see you get this, this page that comes up and it allows you to open a dedicated dev tools for node. And you'll also notice that we get a whole lot of console logs that are, are being dumped out here. And that just the, the debug is like constantly hitting our API, but, but we can just ignore that for now. Let's go ahead and open these dedicated uh, dev tools and you'll see we get a, a console log here and some other tabs. And this is what you'll see in a typical standard uh, Chrome Dev Tools when you when you're debugging on the web and stuff, but it's a a cool little feature that you can use to debug a node application. And so let's just go ahead and we can place a debugger in a couple of ways. One way to do this is just to put the keyword here debugger in in the actual place where you, you want to stop the code. We can just in this first piece of middleware here, let's put this keyword debugger and I'm going to hit save. And you'll see as soon as I hit save there, you'll see that we our code actually breaks and it says the debugger is paused on uh, the exact place where we, we put that keyword debugger. Just a, a, a quick tour here on the left where we have this panel here and it says local. This will kind of give you the parameter or the arguments that are coming through over here. So these will be the, the values of next request and res. And so we can drill down into these and see exactly what is coming on. So if we took a look at the request, you'll see that some of the properties that are on here, there's a base URL, there's query parameters, there's an IP address, the path, the protocol. So there's a whole lot of different properties and even methods that are available to us on this request. And then what we can do is we can place breakpoints within here as well by just clicking on the line of the code. So we can just put a breakpoint here on line 13 and 18. And then if we want to continue, we can just press this play button and you'll see, and now we get a better visual representation of uh, the middleware that is being hit. So we went from this first piece of middleware, uh, we see that the console log was dumped out with the request.url. In this case, we've got this JSON slash version that's coming through, and this is just the, the debugger that's actually being hit. Once we've called this next function, it goes on to the second piece of middleware, and you'll see that we keep hitting these two 
piece of middle here here because this is just the, the debugger that's actually hitting our API to keep the, the kind of connection alive. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove these breakpoints. Instead of just making use of this app.use on the base path of our API, let's just put in something specific. So it'll only match the specific path that we actually make a, a request to. So it won't just give us this constant console logs that we're seeing here. So I'm going to remove this debugger, go ahead and hit save. And you'll see now that we, we don't get these constant console logs and we can go ahead and put some breakpoints in our code manually. So we uh, we will just put it on line 6, 12 and 17 here. And then in Postman, we can go ahead and initiate a get request to localhost 3000 slash user. So I'm going to hit send here and you'll see we hit the first breakpoint. We can see the base URL here is the slash user. If you take a look at the, the raw headers here, you can see some of the headers coming through. We've got the Postman uh, agent, and this is the client that's sending the request. So then we can just step through the code one line at a time. Uh, we'll see that the URL is just the base URL. We can continue on here. It calls the next function, which would then be this next piece of middleware. And that's the second piece of middleware. That's it. And then we get matched to this app.get because it is a get request. And in the request here, there should be, uh, yep, for the, the method over here, you can see it's a get and we hit this user request handler. If I hit player, you'll see that the request response cycle ends and we get back that 200. So if we do a post request here, let's step through the code and see what happens. I'm gonna hit send. We hit this first piece of middleware because this app.use is going to run an all pass that match to user, no matter what the method is. And we can see the method in this case is a post. And then we can just continue on. We hit the second one, because again, we're using the app.use. It matches to the user. It's going to then just put a console log out and you'll see it doesn't hit this app.get.user because it doesn't match the method. And so it skips that all together. And if we take a look, we get this 404 not found with this HTML that comes through and says cannot post user. And that's because Express hasn't been able to match any middleware that we've created. So it's used its default 404 not found request handler. For now I'm going to deactivate these breakpoints and back in our code, let's just continue on with our example here. At this stage, we're not doing anything fancy with our request handlers. All I'm trying to, I'm just trying to demonstrate the point of how the request can flow through all these different functions that we create. I'm going to just remove the second piece of middleware because I think we, we get the point now. I'm going to remove this first console log here. And then let's just now do something a bit more interesting. We can grab something from the request. Let's say the, the IP address and maybe the base URL. So we'll say const, and we'll just use some destructuring here. We'll say IP and base URL, and that'll come from the request. Then we can just do a simple console log. We'll say IP address is the IP. Then we'll just put a new line uh, character there, and then we'll do base URL. Then we'll just inject the value of base URL. Then we'll just leave this next function to be invoked. It'll just move on to the next piece of middleware. So we've used this app.get. On the application level middleware, I wanted to just demonstrate something we can use all the, the different verbs that are available to us on the HTTP, but there's also this app.all. And what we can do with this is it works in the same way where it will have a path and a callback as a parameter. And in the path, we can match this to a specific route. So let's just say user again here. And what this is going to do is no matter what HTTP verb, whether it's a get, post, put, patch, del or patch, delete, whatever, or any one of those verbs, whatever it is, it's going to match it to this request handler and we can run this code. So you might be thinking that what's the difference between dot all and dot use and and dot use is just a, a higher level method where at this stage we've just been doing some trivial examples but you can actually mount different pieces of middleware with the app dot use onto different paths of your api and, and that'll just and that those are from third-party middlewares um, built-in middlewares which we'll cover soon but also uh, routers which we're going to cover in a moment so i would say the dot use is like a, a more higher level application level piece of middleware where this dot org is more used for for catching specific routes with all the different http verbs so let's say on this user path no matter what http verb is coming there's uh, specific things that we want to do before we pass it on to the final request handler so we, we can just set up our request handler here where it has the request, the response, and next. And so for now, we can just do a console log. And let's take a look at this. We'll say user all. And then let's take a look at the request.query. I'm going to hit save here, but let's rather just go ahead and put a breakpoint here. So 
we'll put a, a breakpoint on line seven. Let's put a, a breakpoint on line 12. And in Postman, it doesn't matter. You can choose any one of these um, methods. Let's use a get. And then in the query param section here, we can just put a key and then let's just say user ID and let's just pass in any random value for now. This is just to demonstrate um, an example here. So I'm gonna hit send and you'll see that we get, we hit our, our breakpoint here on line seven. It's the base URL is user. And you can see the IP address here is just colon colon one. And that's just because we're using the local host. And so if I step over this code, you'll see that I've made a, a typo here. And obviously that's my mistake. So we can just fix that real quick. Reinitialize our request here. You can see we, now we've got that base URL and it should print it out. So if we step over our code, you'll see that we get that IP address and the base URL. And then it's going to move on to the next function. And the next middleware here is this app.all that matches to the user root. What I wanted to show you here is on the request, you'll see there's a object here with query and then the user ID. So any of these uh, query parameters that are sent through will then be available to us on the request object. We'll continue on with our, our code and in Postman, you'll see our request is hanging. And the reason is that we haven't passed this control of from this middleware to the next one down the line. So we don't need this right now, but so the type of thing we can do in this kind of case is we can get that user ID and we'll get that from the request.query.user ID. And then over here, we can do some conditional logic and say, if user ID, if that is a truthy value, and I guess you can add any more conditions like to check the length of, of the, the ID, um, you can search in the database. But for now, let's just keep it simple and say any truthy value means that the user ID is on there because it's going to be needed for uh, any of the other methods that we're going to pass it on. So if it's there, we'll, we'll pass it on. Else, if not, we can do a, we can end the response here and now, and we can say res dot send status, and then we'll just send back a 400. With, with the, this piece of code, let's just go ahead to our debugger and initiate a new request. We can do a get request with a user ID. Um, so this, if we hit send here, we hit our first piece of middleware and that's fine. And then we can just continue running our application. And if I step over our code here, you'll see that we've got we've got this user ID. It's a string with a value in here. And so if I step over here, we should hit this next function. And then if I, I just, we can use this option here to step into the next function call. And then this will then pass it on to our third piece of middleware in the chain here, where we've got the user request. And then you can just, on the request object here, you'll see that we do have this user ID. So it still is available there. And if I hit continue with our code, we get back a 200 OK. And so that's the case if the user ID is sent. But let's just do a case where there is no query parameter that's sent. You'll see we hit this first console log and that's fine. And then if I step over our code here, you'll see that we get a value of undefined because if we take a look at the query object here, it's empty. So it wasn't able to find a, a user ID. And so it should hit this line of code next. So if we step over, you'll see we, we can then just uh, do a res send status. If I continue on here and we go back to Postman, you'll see we get this 400 bad request. And that's because we haven't sent it at query parameter. And in this piece of middleware with this app.all, this piece of middleware is designed to check if we have that user ID. So the, the point here and, and what I'm trying to demonstrate is that any piece of middleware that you register can do a little piece of work and then it can control the flow of the request and send it on to, to different places. We've been using this .get, but we can use a post now or let's, let's even do a patch. And if we send that through, we can do the same thing. You'll see because we're using this .all, we still hit this same piece of middleware. In, in this case, we get this 400 bad requests back because we haven't put an ID on here. So we can just put a user ID and let's just uh, put any value in there. I'm going to reinitiate this request. We'll hit that first piece of middleware. The second one, we'll have this user ID. Hit play there, and then you'll see that we get this 404 not found because even though we've hit this first piece of middleware, the second one, it's passed it on to the next one. Um, but the incoming method here is a patch. I'll show you that again. So if we reinitiate this request, and so once it hits this line of code, the, and it's going to pass on to the next one, the next piece of middleware in this chain, the only one we have here is a get, so it's not going to match. And then we'll just pass it on to the next piece of middleware in the chain, which is then the default for, for not found. So, so that's a quick demonstration of this um, .all method here, which can catch requests for, for all the different verbs that are coming in. Just to demonstrate, we can do a app.post here, just to show you one more example. And so these request handlers here, we can set this up real quickly. 
And this is where you can create a user with data on the request object. For now, let's just do a res.send status and that'll be a 200 for now. Let's go back to Postman. Let's do a post request, hit send. We hit our first piece of middleware. We hit our second piece of middleware and we can see the user ID has a value. So it should now match to this and you'll see I get back a, a 200 OK. And so with all those examples that we've walked through here, I think uh, we've covered our first bit of application middleware. We've used this dot use method, the dot all, the dot get and post. With these middleware matches here with the, the methods, I think you, you'll get the drift of being able to match it to different methods. For now, I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this work that we've done so far. And we'll just revert our code back to our standard HTTP server because I wanted to now switch gears and start talking about router level middleware. With a kind of clean slate here, we can start working on that in a moment. And before we actually get into the specifics of this, let's just double check and make sure that we're on the same page with routing. And so every request that is sent by the client, this is done so by using a URL. In our case, our, our URL will be structured in this kind of way. It'll have like the HTTP protocol, colon, forward slash, forward slash. It would have the host, and this is usually the domain. So it'll be like youtube.com or facebook.com, something like that. But in our case, it would just be like localhost or an IP address. We have that forward slash and then after that would be the, the path of our API. We've been inspecting some of the requests that are coming through. In addition to the URL, the request will contain headers and possibly a body. And you can think of this as like meta information and actual information that is attached to the request. And that's like the luggage that the request is carrying um, as it's coming through our API. The protocol and the domain are used by the web browser to initiate an HTTP request. And then the domain is used uh, to match it to a target server. And once it's matched to the server, a HTTP connection will be attempted to be made. And it's at this point that our Express API that's listening on the target port will then receive this request. And now I think we've got a good understanding of middleware. And so the middleware will then receive this request and then we can do a whole lot of things with it. And so we have been talking, we have been talking about this middleware concept, but we, we saw that the middleware kind of follows this pattern in the, the methods where it uses a path and then it matches a middle piece of middleware to a specific path. And so if there is a match, then the middleware callback function is then run and each piece of, of code is run that's in this function body. And so, and, it, and we can see that we can control the flow of this quest as coming in and passing it onto different pieces of middleware. But if there is no match, like we've seen, we get that default 404 response. And that just kind of acts as a backstop that Express uses to handle the situation where there is no custom middleware that we've written to handle the, the specific requests. And so when this request is coming in and the middleware is being run, what's happening behind the scene is Express is matching the specific path that's coming in which we can call our root in our API and it's trying to match it to a specific piece of middleware. So what Express does is it kind of it takes every piece of middleware that we've registered so we can see that with as like these values here that we have on our right the app.get.post.put and um, each one of these have got a piece of middleware that is written there and then the, the path can be either like forward slash API or forward slash API forward slash user. The get request that is coming in here in this example is API forward slash user forward slash 8920. When the request comes in here, it like kind of runs through all the piece of middleware. It, it goes through that first app.get and it, it, tried to making, um, it tries to make an exact match here. So it says, it hasn't made um, a match to the forward slash API because there's additional forward slash on the user. And then it's trying to match it to the second one where it says API slash user. And it doesn't match that because there's another piece of information in our path, which is that number. And in that case, it wouldn't have matched anyway because the method is a get. Um, and in the last case, there's this uh, piece of middleware here where it says app.get and it's API forward slash. And it's got this little piece of syntax to check for a, a parameter, a check for a parameter which is an ID and then so this one is a match and then that piece of middleware will be executed for this specific route that's coming in. So that's just a little quick exp explanation of the, the routing. I think having gone through some of the previous examples with the application level middleware, we, we did kind of assume this or whatever, but this is just like a, a clearer explanation. So, so now that we understand route matching, we can actually speak about router level middleware. And so in the previous example, We've used that app.use and some of the other methods that we explored. But in Express, 
we can actually create a, a higher level middleware object that will kind of house all our, our routing logic in one place. So the way we can do this in Express is we can create a constant here and I'm going to call this router and this is going to act as the, the object and this is going to act as the object that contains all our, our routing and root handlers. And so in Express, we can say, we can reference this Express object. And in here, there, there's this function that we can uh, reference here, which is express.router. And this is going to create an instance of an Express router that th then we can use. And then once we have um, a reference to the router, we can then, in the exact same way that we were using it and attaching some of the middleware to the app object, we can do the exact same thing for the router. So we can say router.use, and we can put in a, a path here, which is user, exactly like we use for the app.use. The router can also use this .use method to run a piece of middleware on all incoming requests for this .user, and we can say rec.res. We'll have the next function there, and we can just do something simple. Just to demonstrate this point, we'll say router use middleware. And then let's just invoke the next function. And then very next, we can say router.get. We'll say user. We'll just pass in a callback. The callback will have a request, a res, and we don't need this next. We just, we will end the response right here. And then we can just send back a res.send status. And let's send back a 200. And just walking through this code, we've created a, a constant here called router. We've assigned it to the value of we've assigned it to the value of this Express router, which is just a, an object that Express creates that will have all the typical things that are available on the app. But this is just like specifically so we can kind of modularize our whole router. The next thing we've done here is we've registered a piece of middleware using the dot use. So we've mounted on the, the forward slash user path this this piece of middleware here. All it's doing is doing a console log. It's in, invoking the next function, which will then pass it on to here if it matches the method and the path. And then we're just sending back a 200. Then we are missing a vital last piece of the puzzle here and so let's go ahead and put a we'll run our code and we'll try and make a request but you'll see that it's not going to work in the way that we intended it to so i'm just going to delete this we'll use a get request i'm not going to pass in the user id for now we'll just do a simple get request you'll see that we get a 404 not found and the reason that this is happening is that even though we've defined some middleware on this router the way that this needs to work is we need to attach this whole router onto the app this express app object and so that's why we got the 404 not found because this middleware that we've created here hasn't even been registered on the express object so this is an important point in express is you you need to ensure that your middleware is registered properly and the way that you can do this is use the, the app.use and this is where we can just use this base forward slash path here and then we're kind of saying any request that comes through on the forward slash we want to make use of the this router so we can just pass in this this whole router that we've got there and then that's all we need to do for now and so hopefully this gives you a, an idea now of what the dot users use for specifically it's used to like you can use this to mount like sub routers and sub uh, middlewares that you write uh, onto the application object so let's go ahead and test this out in postman we can initiate another send we get back a 200 let's just open up our debugger and we can just put in a few breakpoints there and let's reinitialize a request and you can see if we take a quick inspection here um, not much has changed so the router is behaving the exact same way as the application level middleware that we we were making use of earlier and so i can just continue on here we get back that 200 and so this is just the the example that i wanted to use here is that the whole point of being able to separate the application middleware from the router middleware is that we can then abstract all this code and we can actually move it into a separate file so we can do exactly that we can just cut this code that we've used out there i'm not going to save it right now but what we can do is create a new file and we can call this router.js and so then what i'll do is i'll paste this code in here and what we need to do at the top is just import express. And once we have the express, oh, check that typo, just remove. Um, there's just too many S's there that I put in. We can just save this work here now. We're creating this router. It's doing the exact same thing. The last thing that we need to do is just export this router. So we can say export default router. 
going to save that work and then in this index.js file we can then import the router from and that'll just be the router.js file and this router here will then just be passed into the app.use we can reinitiate a request now to see if it's working you can see we get this router use middleware has been hit we get that 200 okay if we take a look at our, our debugger here we'll need to go to our router.js file and then we can just put our breakpoints back there we can reinitialize our request and so you can see that what happens now is that when our code is executed this instance of express is created on the app.use we are mounting this router which is coming from the router.js file onto the the base path of our api and when it starts listening for any request it then passes any traffic that is coming through into our base api here it passes it onto this router and so then this router receives it on the first piece of middleware it will then run that console log the second one will just return at 200 and so you can see we get that 200 back in this way we've got a nice neat modularized router and it kind of makes our code a little bit neater but it also just makes it easier to organize the code and as your application grows then you, you'll be able to attach different routers. So the way you could do this down the line is you could have something like this, where you have anything that comes on the forward slash API route must go to the router. If you wanted a different router for API slash V1, then you can create a separate V1 router and you can continue doing and mounting any types of like high level API slash admin. And then that could go to the admin router. And that's in this way, we can create different routers for each different like high level parts of our application and that just kind of makes it a bit neater at this stage so i'm going to just remove that i was just trying to demonstrate that point i think let's go back to our router here and at this stage we've been using very simple examples for our request handlers we haven't been doing anything that crazy with the request and response so let's just go ahead and let's register a few more pieces of middleware we will say router.post and this will be on the user we'll have a request and a response. I won't use the next because we'll just do um, what we want to do here is we'll just send back a res.send status of 200. And then let's just do one more. We'll say res.put, I mean, router.put will reference the, the user. And then over here, let's put a, I'm going to put a parameter here. And so this, this root will then make use of an ID that comes through. And then this will also have a request handler so we'll say rec.res and in this case for now we'll also just send back a status just to end the http response uh, or the, the request response life cycle so we've got a few pieces of middleware here i think let's also put a a parameter or a url parameter for the id in our debugger we can just make sure we'll leave the debugger here on line six and then we'll just put a debugger in each one of these request handlers and let's just do a we can put an ID in the path here. We'll hit send. And so just remember, if we take a look at our index.js, we've changed this now that it, it must have a prefix of API in our path. So I'm just going to change this to API and then that'll have the user. And then we'll just put an ID in there. I'm gonna hit send and you'll see we hit our first console log and then it's going to get matched to this, this get function here. And that's all good. And we can just test the, we'll do test the put there. We get back, hit the first piece of middleware and then we get the, the put. And that's all looking good because we get back a 200 there. And so the important takeaway here is um, anything that we could use on the application level middleware is it, like for specific to routing, we can do that with on this router object here. And that just kind of like packages all the code nice and neatly. At this point in time, I want to start doing a bit more interesting things with our requests and responses. I want to introduce one of these new types of middleware. Uh, Express makes a whole lot of built-in middleware available from the library. And so we can make use of this by using the app.use. And to use the like the kind of way that the we can use the built-in middleware is instead of mapping this to a specific path, we can just reference the express um, the express library and there is this function or method that i want to make use of which is this dot json method and what this does is it allows us to make use of a json type requests and response and so it makes working with json a little bit easier and just take note that this piece of middleware which we've registered here is going to be the first one in our middleware chain so as the request comes through the first thing it's going to do is hit this 
this piece of middleware express is going to do its thing and then it'll it'll pass it'll invoke the next function that we've seen and been using and it'll just pass every of the one of those requests onto the the router here so i'm just going to hit save there we can clean up our work and so let's send a post request in this case and then i'm going to remove this id and then in the body we can now send some json through here we'll say we'll put an email address here and we'll just say jeff at test.com and i'm going to hit a send and so as we hit our first breakpoint here we can see that there is a post method but the thing that i wanted to show you here is we've got this uh, new key here called body and you'll see that the email is available on this key here so i'm going to just hit continue here and you can see we we hit this dot user. I mean, we hit this post method here. At this point, it's just returning a 200. And so now that we know that we've got some information that we can grab a hold of in our post middleware here, we can then grab a hold of that email address. So we can do that by using some object destructuring. And we'll say rec.body, because we've just inspected that on the request object, there will be a body key and it'll contain or all the information that's coming through on on the request so uh, let's just maybe do some additional let's just have a, a first name and a last name and then we can adjust our response here and then typically what we would do is take this information then save it to a a db or something like that and this is where you can create functions and lines of code that will kind of do anything that you need to do with this information that is being sent through. And, and then typically what would happen is in the, a, a case where the information was sent successfully, we can then send back a status of 200 and then we can use this .json method, which is available that we can chain onto this .status. And then we can send back some JSON and we can have a message. We can say, successfully saved to the database and then we can just send back an object with the user so it'll be let's just say request.body and we'll say email is we'll just use this object shorthand we'll say email first name um, last name and we'll just send that back and so let's go ahead and test this out in postman so we've got the email let's add in a first name and the last name well, can be Smith, whatever, and we'll send that through. You can see in our body, we've got an email, a first name and a last name. We hit this first piece of middleware. Before we actually move on, let me just readjust our breakpoints. I want to hit a breakpoint on line 16. I'm going to hit continue. And if I step over this code, you'll see we've got the email available to us, Jeff, the last name, and then it's going to send through this res.status. And so I can hit continue there and in postman you'll see we get a 200 back and instead of and now we've got a better formatted message um, in json uh, we've got the successfully saved to database and we've got all the information that we've returned so so with this one line of code here that we've and with this one line of code express.json we've used some built-in uh, middleware that's available to us express and this makes working with our working with json data in our api very very simple and easy and you can see the important thing here is that the order of middleware in express is really important so we've uh, attached this as the first piece of middleware because it needs to be kind of executed on every piece of code and then we then pass it onto our router and the router now is doing all the logic to map the incoming path to a request handler. And now you can see once we, we've set this up to, to use JSON, we can start doing some more interesting things. We're not going to take this all the way to like setting up a database and that kind of thing. The important thing that I wanted to demonstrate here was application middleware, router middleware, as well as this built-in middleware. We've covered a lot of ground in this tutorial so far. We've done some foundational knowledge. We understood how the Express application is initialized. We've taken a little bit of a deeper dive into the, the code behind the scenes there. We understand now what the application level Express object is and how we can use that to, to use middleware. We understand the concept of middleware now. We, we took a look at how routes and route matching works, as well as how to handle requests and send back response. With all of the work that we've covered, this gives you the base foundation and understanding of how Express works 
from more of a conceptual point of view, but also very practically how to set this up. And so taking the time to understand Express like this and understanding these these concepts, um, what's the difference between application level, well, what is middleware, what's the difference between application level middleware and, and root level middleware, as well as using some of the, the built-in middleware that's available to us. This gives you a solid understanding of how Express works, and I'm sure it'll make you more confident and makes work going to build your own APIs a, a lot easier. And, and you'll see once you've gone through all this work, I think things will start clicking a lot better. And so that's a wrap for this uh, lesson that I've put together here. I hope you've learned something here and you can take a lot from it. If you did get anything from this, please go ahead and give me a like on the video, subscribe to my channel. It goes a long way to help me producing more of this type of content. And let me know in the comments if you have any questions and any other topics that you, you, you want me to, to kind of go through. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in another video. Cheers for now. If you want to keep learning more about Express, check out my passport authentication course I put together. All 44 lessons are available as a playlist so you can go through them one by one right here on YouTube. In the course, we will build an Express API from scratch. I'll show you how to implement local authentication using the passport library. It's in-depth and very detailed. So dive in if you want to learn more. I'll see you in the course.